Sophie Allison, the imagination behind Soccer Mommy, is always searching for ways to translate the complex world inside of her into her music. Her third studio album, Sometimes Forever, not only features her most penetrating songwriting to date, she's also expanded her sound into an exquisite chaos as vivid as her emotional life. Allison sits down with NPR Music to talk about giving her love songs real bite and her music immersive power. When you find a great record, you want it to be something that you can get obsessed with and listen to a bunch and then come back to it in three weeks and listen to it again and you have a different favorite song and, you know, you want to be able to find not just necessarily different ideas in the song but um different things that really stick out to you and that feel like exciting and and fresh when i listened to the song unholy affliction Mm -hmm. on the new album it really brought into focus for me you know you're you're dealing with themes of professional ambition artistic ambition the tension between those two things and i was also thinking about you're putting this album out Um, at a moment when everything, everything about what you're doing is, is sort of larger in scale. I mean, from the production to just, you know, the size of, of your audience and your profile at this point in time and, and everything that's around you. And it made me wonder where you feel like you are in your progression toward your ambitions at, at this point in time as you're putting this album out. Yeah, I mean, I think that my ambitions are never ending in the sense that every time I reach a goal, it doesn't even feel like a goal anymore. It's something that I'm already 10 steps down the road (laughs) a little bit, Um, which obviously kind of can take away from that, that feeling of success, but it also keeps you always wanting to grow and always wanting to do more. And I think especially with a song like that, that's kind of the point is it's like, you have all this ambition to like make art that is exactly what you want it to be and that is constantly like pushing you further and like you're constantly trying to be better and better and and grow and make something more perfect and you kind of have to fight with all of the other things that come with with that um in order to get that uh those chances at at doing what you want to do with your art And I think one thing that adds so much power and impact to the way that song lands is that it it has that industrial feel. I mean, it Mm -hmm. almost feels post-human, you know, put the, the, the artificial, um, you know, those heavy mechanistic sounds that you chose for that track. Yeah. Even in the demo, I had a lot of that kind of, um, that vibe going because I, I really wanted it to feel robotic. You know, I wanted it to feel um, the song is, is sitting there saying like uh, kind of like I'm I'm having all this like this greed and all of the stuff that isn't what I want. But it's it's coming with the like desire for success and that kind of desire feels like a, a drug a little bit and also something that I just want it to, you know, be blood out of me. Um And it just kind of, it's dehumanizing, you know, it's like feeling that like I'm a machine, basically. All I do is like run myself until I I can't run anymore. And um, it's kind of a confession too of like, yeah, okay, I, I keep myself, I push myself further and further and kind of run myself as if I am a machine and as if my feelings are not the important part um but also I'm going to keep doing it that's kind of the confession of it is like okay well I don't know I'm just gonna probably keep going in this cycle but yeah it's kind of got that robotic inhuman feeling Ooh, I feel that I Mm -hmm. hear that I I receive it and (laughs) identify with it I definitely definitely do and since we're talking about the exacting standards that that you have for Mm -hmm. your artistry I mean I wonder at this point with the experience that you have under your belt as a songwriter as a record maker what it took this time around to take the snippets of ideas the guitar lines pieces of melody or you know bits of image 
and shape them and refine them until you were pleased with with what you had in these 11 songs yeah I mean I think every of course every song is um, different and the process is different but for me I get so excited about writing when I feel like I found something that I want to write and the way I do it is I sit down and start playing guitar just like I did you know when I was 10 years old and I start singing over it once I find a chord progression I like and maybe I hate it and I get frustrated and I put the guitar down and (laughs) come back another another time um but when you get that good idea it's like for me all I can focus on a little bit is just getting working on that and like getting it more perfect and working it until it's it's done and it's um and usually it doesn't take that much time once an idea is started you know everything's flowing you feel like you're just kind of getting all these ideas that whether it be lyrically or arrangement wise um and I kind of can't stop until I've had lived with the song for a moment and feel that sense of completion and it kind of um it goes that way with with every song regardless of how the writing process is um but yeah it never feels um stressful or forced or anything it's just like once you hit that get that spark it's like so so natural to just like want to keep keep going with that idea and see where it goes and like you know find all of the perfect pieces for a song I have already had the chance to obsess over the album. I mean, this is not the first time that I've listened to it. And I was struck by how the way that you write about um, relationships, love, you know, partnership has evolved over time. Mm -hmm. And in songs like Bones and Shotgun and With You, you know, those those narrators in those songs do a lot of self-scrutiny. They really look at you know, how they are in a partnership. And, you know, I mean, you're, you give us these rich pictures of moments in partnership or domestic life Mm -hmm. that are not necessarily just safe, you know? And I wonder how you kind of bypassed um, all the, all the, the easy ways of writing about, about love and relationships mm-hmm. to get to um, those kinds of portraits that that kind of get at the danger involved in being devoted to someone. Yeah, um, I mean, I think it's maturity. <laughs> like you know, it's growing up. Uh, like you know, when I was writing the songs for Clean, I was like eighteen, and. Um, I had not been in, I'd only been in one relationship. I was in high school. It's not, you know, that's, that's, that's a whole nothing. other thing. It's a whole, <laughs> it's not, it's not serious like that. And now I've, you know, been with the same person for six years and it's, it's a much deeper understanding of each other. It's a much deeper intimacy. Um, and I think it, it really, uh, being, being in a relationship that was what I wanted and felt good and felt really, you know, connected definitely gave me more reason, um, in a lot of times in my life to take a look at my behavior and my, you know, tendencies and the way that I treat myself and the way that affects other people. Um, and I think that, a lot of times I can be the danger to to myself and that's the thing it's like I can just be um pushing myself too hard as for as already stated or I can be not like giving myself any sort of you know kindness and those things affect other people and that's a that's a much deeper like and more difficult thing to like talk about and understand um it is. And it's also, it definitely it's is. Beautiful. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I mean, there there have been five million, you know, songwriters in the history of of popular music that mm-hmm. have chosen to just kind of you know write about love in a way that points the finger. Yeah. <laughs> at other well, people. and it's and it's what's the point? I guess in in my mind to write a song that says, you know, you did all these things. Like to really, I don't know, harbor that kind of like 
completely being on your own side um feelings i someone's probably gotta have made you feel really bad um to not have any level of like in these reactions the reason this fell apart or the reason you know that i feel feel bad is be- partially because of myself and i think that that's um something that relationships do force you to look at a lot of yourself and not as not necessarily in a way that you know someone else is unhappy with you it's just you look at the way your actions affect other people you look at the way your pain affects other people um and you just have to you have to like look more into I don't know like with a song like with you it's it's um it's a love song and it's the song about this complete devotion but it's also not about this kind of devotion that you imagine when you're like 17 and you're right. wanting to be with someone and you're like I'd do anything for them it's more like I want to share your pain I want to be able to take that from you you know I want to be there for you whenever you need it and I don't need something in return and it's it's a it's you know beauty and and pain are very intertwined and love and pain are very intertwined and um I think to have like a a single-minded approach on love with just being it's great and it's amazing um is it's just kind of not um it doesn't touch you because it's not that relatable and deep like there's so many other layers that are part of what makes it so beautiful to be able to connect with someone and share your life with them so we've been talking about realism (laughs) realism in your songwriting but I mean something else that really stood out to me about this album is that there are moments there are songs where you move into the realm of the fantastical or the apocalyptic Mm -hmm. or the paranormal you know like um new demo following eyes and i wonder especially because you know people often sort of interpret your music as being acutely personal or autobiographical in one way or another what it offers you to kind of move into these other realms completely different worlds when you're you know creating a piece of of music um the way it feels or the story that you're telling well that that's the thing i mean it's like some of some of it comes from you know creating these fantasies or ideas that relate to things that are going on in my life but also sometimes it's like I don't know. I think that fantasy is so amazing because it it does offer reprieve from lots of stuff, and it does just offer this um, this escapism. And I think that to be able to write a song, um, you know, when you're feeling I don't know, when you're feeling down about the world or just very cynical, um, to be able to write a song that has that sort of like catastrophizing and that cynicism but it's also turning it into something um like entertaining and and kind of um taking away that that super harsh aspect uh it can make it it can give you a chance to be like creative with it and and make it into something that captures your feelings but also has this this sort of um creativity that allows you to imagine that like it's possible that you know, something fantastical could happen and life could be beautiful again tomorrow or something. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd always like read and heard that you, those are things that you're interested in in your, yes. you know, <laughs> in games that you like to play, stuff you like to read, stuff you like to watch, um, all kinds of fantastical or supernatural or sci-fi you know um those genres so Mm -hmm. i figured you probably had some ideas about um what makes them interesting or what the creative possibilities are when you work with that kind of stuff so no yeah i love all of that stuff i mean i just think that magic allows even with just something as simple as a drama a tv drama magic anything can happen (laughs) <laughs> sitcom drama is a whole anything other kind ridiculous of, a whole other can kind happen <laughs> and it's going to be entertaining and yeah I don't know I think that I think that those kind of you know when you think about ghosts or demons or fairies or 
magic in general um while I personally believe in some of those things um I also think a lot of ideas like that are created in like literature and uh to kind of tell tell lessons you know give tell stories and give lessons and to kind of um take things that are maybe like darker evil about the world and make them into something that's more digestible and kind of like cool and fun um so I always I always love that kind of stuff I mean the the production on this album is another aspect Mm -hmm. of it that is fantastical you know uh, (laughs) because you brought in a different producer to work with this point in time this time around I mean and, and I wonder what kinds of conversations you had about what you wanted, what you were looking for. And I'm also really curious what your reactions were when you heard, when you heard, you know, some of those, the finished products Mm -hmm. as you were in there working and you began to hear your songs enveloped in, you know, just these otherworldly synthesizer parts and like glitchy electronic effects and, you know, guitar squall, um, what that felt like. Um, it was awesome to finally hear the final things and I was uh, when we went in to work on the record and before that I had like obviously we had decided to to work with Dan and we had texted a lot of ideas back and forth and we really wanted to get this like this core that felt like the live band you know this stuff because we've been playing together for so long we wanted to get that in there but then add this magical like ambiance and and this kind of um all of these like interesting strange ideas um almost on top of what could have just been basic pop songs and so we got in there and we got these live takes down and then it was just like playtime basically for the kids and um you know we all I think everyone not just not just me and Dan but like everyone in the band everyone had all these ideas And we all had this stuff we wanted to try on songs and that's what makes that's what makes records so magical is like when you can all just have these little ideas that are kind of strange but can be something big ideas yeah or big (laughs) ideas like or like a song like like still um it's like it's fairly stripped back but like we wanted to add some cool like ambiance with stuff like there's something that kind of runs through the whole song that is actually me singing into this guitar um recent pedal and so it basically takes all these like octaves and it like made this like very washy kind of um just like droning like you know crooning over over the whole background that just kind of and I imagine that was definitely not the intended use of that guitar pedal <laughs> oh probably not but I wouldn't be surprised if they had thought of it uh because they're made. it's this company hologram that's from Tennessee actually but um yeah, I mean, st- things like that can just totally turn a song into going from being a good song that's just, you know, sounds like a band playing a song to something that's really intriguing and had this has this complete layer of, like, magic and, and emotion and, and wash behind it. And so we had all these ideas, and it was so fun to get to put them down because for me... I always go in with all these big picture ideas, but like in my head, I, I know what I want it to be and to get to see it start becoming that is always really exciting. Cause it's like, Oh my God, we have to put this synth part in. This is perfect. Like for this portion, this is totally the right direction. You know, I don't know how we came up with it, but it's totally exactly where I want to go. And Dan, the producer, um, he was just so amazing with like arranging, you know, we'd, play a bunch of little parts like that over a section and there'd be like all these parts that were just kind of in there and then he'd take them and put them in this like like compose this symphony of of stuff around um a part that would totally just like you know shock you and and amaze you I guess when when you hear it for the first time it sounds like you're describing the meeting of you know of two sort of auteurs you know like <laughs> you and one of tricks point no you know yeah. I mean, like that that music is is so like fully formed and otherworldly mm-hmm. you know you brought yeah. the two worlds together totally and yeah and it was great new 
that was that was the best part i that's what i wanted him to bring you know i wanted him to bring this energy of taking these songs and be able to make it feel like otherworldly and even within a song you come to a part and everything changes and suddenly you feel like you're in a different completely different song or something like it's its own portion but also it blends perfectly with with the rest and it's very hard to do you have to like be paying a lot of attention to detail and have you know know how all these things are going to pan out and he's amazing at it well i i hope that you know the people that enjoyed listening to sometimes forever for the first time Mm -hmm. they will new layers and new details and new surprises will reveal themselves to them Mm -hmm. the second time the sixth time the twelfth time you know yeah (laughs) that's the kind of album that you made that's that's the goal let's hope let's hope people feel that way everyone write in that you like it (laughs) <laughs> or, and and the surprises that you hear yeah. you know don't you want to know what easter eggs people yeah. might find oh definitely some people sometimes people find stuff and you're like i don't i don't think that's what that actually is <laughs> well that's that's a matter of interpretation or you're like, i didn't even i didn't even notice that i guess somebody played it played it wrong that time that's a matter yeah. of yeah of interpretation yeah. too totally. but yeah interpretation creative interpretation close listening mm-hmm. all of that yeah i mean you can tweet soccer mommy and say what i will you yeah just tweet tweet my manager <laughs> tell him whatever you want him to to filter out and then tell me <laughs> I think that is <laughs> is a wrap. Sophie, thank awesome. you so much for talking about this phenomenal album that you have made. Yeah, of course. Thank you so much for having me.